We've come to the big finale, folks. This is the last episode we're covering for October 2020, so happy Halloween! I'm just a bit sad we have to end things with a subpar episode like The Chaser. It's a pretty basic love potion story, but it's not without some admirable behind-the-scenes production techniques, and John McIntyre's portrayal of Professor A. Damon is pretty good, so not a total loss. This was actually the only episode of the first season not written by Rod Serling, Charles Beaumont, or Richard Matheson. No, this was written by Robert Prenzel Jr., his only credit for the whole show, and was adapted from the short story of the same name by John Henry Collier. According to Mark Zickery's The Twilight Zone Companion book, the script was originally written for and performed live on the Billy Rose Television Theater in 1951. I found some information on Billy Rose, but next to nothing about his television theater show. In any case, that could explain why this isn't quite up to snuff. Maybe it just didn't translate well and not enough was changed. Mainstay Douglas Hayes directed, but even his talents couldn't quite save most of this episode. A young man named Roger Shackleforth is obsessed with an uninterested woman named Leela. When we meet him, he's continuously calling her from a payphone to profess his love. However, he's been trying to get through for quite a while and a line has formed behind him. Trying to get Shackleforth out of the booth, a man gives him a card to go see someone who can help with his romantic issue. This brings Roger to the residence of the irritable Professor A. Damon. He reluctantly sells Roger a love potion for a dollar. Shackleforth is supposed to put it in Leela's drink, and like magic, she will fall madly, hopelessly in love with him. And after some convincing to get into her house and share some champagne, that's exactly what happens. We then jump ahead to see they've been married for six months. Roger has grown tired of constantly being showered with affection and returns to the professor, possibly seeking another much more expensive liquid Damon calls Glove Cleaner. So Roger is, uh... I must see you, darling, must. Furiously, fiercely, must! A little... Just spare me five minutes and have one drink with me. I love you. You. Horrible person. He's a, he's a terrible, horrible person. I realize the love potion story was a trope used in a ton of movies and series back then, and even to this day in some form, but this one is noteworthy because of what happens at the end, which we'll get to. The one significant saving grace of this episode is the Professor A. Damon character, played very well by John McIntyre. He's great in every scene he's in. Toxins, tonics, antitoxins, decoctions, concoctions, and potions. All guaranteed. His name's not exactly subtle, but the performance is pretty awesome, as is the library lair in his house. Director Douglas Hayes said that set nearly doubled the budget of the episode, but producer Buck Houghton got the money to make it happen. When they first open the door to Damon's home, we see a door in the distance that's supposed to look far back. It's actually a smaller door to trick the eye, and it works pretty well. When Roger steps inside to open the door, Hayes wanted to have one big reveal shot where he could bring the camera in on a crane and show the vastness of the room. To achieve this, they actually move the walls apart as the doors open so the crane could fit through. It's an impressive shot, and the whole set looks great. They lit it partially from behind the bookcases to give it a kind of unnatural glow. So Roger gets the love potion, gives it to Leela, and it works. What's happening? What difference? Come here, baby. <laughs> Just a reminder, this is literally right before that. Please go. Now. I don't want you here. I don't even like you at the moment. Now please go. Yeah, that hasn't aged well. They jump ahead right away to six months after their wedding, and he's already sick of her. I thought we'd get a scene or two to build up to that, but it doesn't happen. From there, it's right back to Damon's place, where things get pretty dark. The glove cleaner mentioned earlier is actually a poison meant to painlessly kill someone without a trace of foul play. After a few minutes, Damon convinces Roger to make the purchase, something he seemed to already be willing to do since he had a $1,000 check made out and ready to hand over. Damon is especially devious in this scene. Always the same way. First the stimulant, then the chaser. Roger returns home, ready to give her the poison. He puts it in another champagne glass when Leela reveals something unexpected. I've got news for you, sweet little rabbit. Rabbit. Yes, Leela is pregnant. Roger tells himself he wouldn't have gone through with it anyway, and he faints upon hearing his wife say this is just the beginning of their life together. We then end with Damon being seen smoking a cigar on their balcony. He puffs the shape of a heart and fades away. 
Honestly, it wasn't until this last rewatch that I realized the glove cleaner was poison meant to kill Leela. I'm so used to the love potion antidote trope that that dark detail went right over my head before. That also makes Roger an even worse person for being willing to kill his wife. If they wanted to go down an even darker route, they could have had him kill her and find out she was pregnant after. I could see that fitting into a more serious Twilight Zone episode, but this one definitely had a lighter tone. It wouldn't have worked with the way the story was presented to us. The original short story was just dialogue between what would be the Damon and Roger characters in the episode. I read it, and it works much better in that abbreviated context. Overall, this episode has some fun stuff about it, but it's definitely not one I would go out of my way to track down. George Gazard would pop up in a better episode down the line, and Douglas Hayes would direct far superior installments going forward. And that's it for Twilight Tober Zone. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. It was a whole ton of work. We'll have to see if we can do it again next year because I love talking about the Twilight Zone. And if you watched some of these videos and are interested in checking out the show, I couldn't recommend it more. Big shout out to Mark Zickery's The Twilight Zone Companion Book for being a constant source of great information. The Blu-ray set also had some phenomenal behind the scenes interviews and commentaries. If you're a big fan of the show, it's worth getting. Make sure you guys check out my personal YouTube channel where I may review some Twilight Zone related content coming up soon. Also, follow me on Twitter and Facebook so we can discuss more about this series. I love getting to talk about these episodes, so don't hesitate to stop on by and start a conversation. Until next time, this is Walter Benaziak saying Happy Halloween from The Twilight Toba Zone.